Is the timing of the investment returns you receive more important than how big your returns are? Time to think like an investor. So here I am sitting in school one day in high school. I remember this so clearly, like it was yesterday. And I'm like 15 or 16 years old. I think I'm 15 years old. I'm in like the 10th grade. And you know how high school kids are. They're just so ruthless and obnoxious. And we had this one teacher with kind of like a short fuse. And we would do whatever we could possibly do to kind of rile him up to see if we could get him to snap. I know it's so mean, but if you've been in high school, you've been around people who do this, it just, it just kind of happens. And I remember like, we're sitting in this computer class where like, we're learning HTML programming, probably the most boring thing around. And I've got a group of buddies and we're you know, being rambunctious and trying to get him going. And over time throughout the class, we can see that he's getting a little more aggravated and more aggravated as we're kind of yapping while he's talking and kind of ignoring the lesson. And it gets to the point where we can tell this guy's about to blow. And he's kind of a quirky guy, maybe in like his late 60s, early 70s. And he's just kind of like the prime target for someone you can kind of pick at. I feel so bad for teachers. But all this being said, it gets to the point where he's teaching the lesson and finally something happens. We're still talking and he absolutely explodes. And I will never forget ever what he said. It must have been some sort of slip. He yells out, Lord have mercy, if it wasn't for the stock market, I'd be retired by now. And it was just hilarious because he was so sick of having to deal with kids and he was so upset with what had happened with his investments that he let this blurt out in a room full of people that his investments had let him down and now he has to teach these kids in his class. It was one of the most insane things I've ever heard. So for me, oddly enough, as like a 15 year old who was actually interested in the stock market, the reason I found this so funny that maybe the reason my classmates didn't is that was 2010. That was like the depths of the Great Recession. Like the worst stock market crash over the last 100 years had just hit this poor guy right before he was about to retire. And this is the funny thing is maybe that teacher had been doing the right things the whole time throughout his entire career. He had been putting money away, maybe even getting a great rate of return. But it's very possible that he fell into what a lot of people fall into is this understanding of the sequence of your returns and how important they are relative to maybe just the rate of return that you actually get. And this is something I want to explain. This is important. Let's say you're 25. You're probably between 18 and 35. I don't know, but for now you're 25. Okay. And that probably means you've got about $10,000 invested and you've come over to YouTube to watch me talk about investing so we can learn a little bit more. So you have $10,000. Okay. This is very simple. If we get a 10% rate of return on your money right now, that means you're going to have a thousand dollars in profits. At the end of the year, you'll have $11,000, your principal plus your 10%. But okay, let's fast forward like 40 years and now you're 65. Okay. And because you're 65, you're close to retirement and you've had a lot more time to build your investments and now you're at a million. Okay. Now you have a million dollars. Let's say you get that exact same 10% that you had gotten before as a 25 year old, but now you get that 10% on a million dollars, same amount of work, same return, but now you have a hundred thousand dollars in profit, right? 10 times the amount. So what I'm really getting at here is when you're 25, okay, and you have $10,000 invested, the return you get in any specific year isn't going to be some monumental leap for your investments, right? But when you're 65 and when there's a million dollars there, plus or minus 10% is a massive move. Plus 10% means a hundred thousand dollars and minus 10% means you're down a hundred thousand dollars in any given year. So you can kind of see maybe how the timing of different returns matters just as much as the rate of return you get, because depending on when you're investing, maybe at 65, the investment returns are so much more influential and impactful on your life, as opposed to when you're just starting out, sure, you want to get a high rate of return, but it's not going to really impact you all that much. So to illustrate this more clearly, we can actually use tools like Portfolio Visualizer. If you're new to the channel, this might be new to you, but if you've been around, you've seen us use this before. It's this unbelievable tool that allows us to kind of simulate how different investments would move given different conditions. Now that might make not much sense, but let's dive into this, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simulate a scenario where we are now 65 years old, or even just say 60 years old, okay? And what we're gonna do is we have a million dollars invested, right? 
And what we want to do is we want to retire now. So we want to withdraw like $50,000 every single year so that we can spend that and actually retire. You can pause this and take a look at it and see what I've set up here. But what we see is that if we put 60% of your money in US stocks and 40% in bonds, that's kind of like a balanced portfolio, we can run what's called a Monte Carlo simulation. It essentially creates thousands of little simulations to see how often would this be successful and how often would it fail. And the reality here is that it's successful a lot of the time. Here's our simulated portfolio balances. And what it shows is that in all the scenarios, whether we get the best 10% of the time, or let's say the median right in the middle, or even almost the worst case scenario, in all of these scenarios, we end up being able to achieve the goal of retiring, right? From 60 until 90, let's call it. That's a 30 year span. Only in one of those scenarios do we end up not having enough money. And this is what we're doing. We're assuming the average rates of returns for stocks and bonds. What we haven't thought about though, is what sequence do we get those in? Do we get really bad returns at the very start or do we get bad returns at the very end? This is what I'm trying to talk about guys. I'm talking about what order do you get your returns in? Because we can think all day long about, oh, I got an 8% rate of return. That's fantastic over the course of my life. And we make projections and we do our financial plans around this stuff. But if you get the worst returns first, when you retire, it makes a massive difference. So let's make adjustment here. Let's say that in our sequence of return section, we have the worst three years first. So this would be like my teacher from high school who was teaching me computer class, where he actually realized, uh-oh, like I don't have enough money to retire. So this is the exact situation my teacher was probably in when he realized the market crashed right as he wanted to retire, okay? If we have our worst three years first, and we run this again, it's gonna look completely different because that million may have had three really bad years and that could have brought it down to 750,000 or even worse. And what we find in these simulations is now, yeah, it's way worse in only two of the scenarios, like our top 25% optimistic take and our top 90th percentile, these actually work out but the rest completely fail, right? So it's so interesting to see how, yes, we can get the same set of returns but if we get them at different times, it can be completely catastrophic to the way we run our investments and our plans for the future. So the moral of the story here, guys, is that when you're young and you're just getting started with investing, you actually want to see the negative side of the sample first, and that might sound complicated. All I really mean is you'd actually prefer to have the worst years first. As a young person, you should kind of in a weird way be like praying for a stock market crash, because what we know is that if you know, valuations, where the stock market is, if it's really high, that tends to signal that the future returns are not going to be as hot. But if it's really low and we've seen a crash, that tends to signal that future returns, we don't know when, but they're going to be better. And what that ultimately means is that, you know, if we have such a small amount of money, we don't really want to see the best elements of our return over the course of our life in those few years while our account's small. We'd rather prefer to be contributing money and growing our account while the market's crashing and while it's declining. It might sound crazy, but that's actually statistically better for your wealth in the long haul. And if you're older, let's say getting close to retirement, that's the exact opposite. You want to, I mean, you'd prefer if you got the worst segments of your returns later in life. You'd prefer for those first few years to be really good that might mean you could take more retirement income or feel more safe with the plan that you have. But here's the tricky thing and the really unfortunate part of all this is you have no say in how the sequence plays out. We don't know what the market's gonna do. You can't just decide to have the best years at the beginning or at the end. The market kind of gives you what the market gives you and you kind of have to just accept that. So what are we left to do if we can't actually determine where we're going to be in that cycle or what sequence we're going to get our returns in? So for me, it's all about maximizing the things that are in our control. Determining the sequence we get obviously is out of our control. We can't choose when to get what we get. But as a young person, this means just putting a lot less fuss into trying to maximize your returns and stressing out less about where you're gonna invest or put money to explode the value of your account. Really what you should be focusing on is saving as much as possible, growing that base so you can compound from a higher place. That's what you wanna be doing as a young person, not stressing over where exactly am I going to get the highest return. Now, if you're older and you're an adult, you don't get to choose your sequence either. It's just kinda of you're gonna get what you're gonna get. But what you can do is you can explore something called a barbell strategy, okay? And what a barbell strategy is, is it's having 
a massive portion of your portfolio, probably 9% of it invested in the markets and invested in a place where it's growing. Kind of like we talked about on Portfolio Visualizer when we walked through that example, but have 10% of your money or two to three years worth of income sitting purely in cash, not invested at all. And what that means is if you get those worst years of the sequence in the first three, you have cash to draw on for your income so you don't have to take from your investments at the worst possible time. If this is brand new to you, this is important. It's something you need to understand and look into and see how you can maximize with your actions the things that you're in control of instead of just kind of hoping like my teacher that the sequence plays out perfectly well. So anyways, guys, if you got any value out of this video whatsoever, if you learned something today, make sure to hit that like button to support the channel, hit subscribe and turn on post notifications for more videos just like this one every single week. Until next time.